Our next artist uh, is indeed very special. He's a great friend of mine. He's probably one of the most well-known artists in the whole of Australia, uh, Mr Gary Pinto. He was born and in Melbourne. He went to Mazinon College and started off an early career in music. He has a strong family from India who passed the faith on to him in a very special way. But he has such a unique gift in his voice. And he will tell you his story, <clears throat> how he came to his faith, how he hit rock bottom, and how the merciful Jesus brought him out of severe depression. If you want to know the name and who he is, just Google Gary Pinto. There are pages and pages and pages on this great Australian Catholic artist who's proud to be Catholic. Could you please welcome Mr Gary Pinto?
Thank you so much. I might, I might stand. It's, I can see you better, probably. So um, I always think of John as the little Johnny. Everybody starts a joke with, little Johnny. Because no. <laughs> he's always so funny. Um, thank you so much, John, for having me again, brother. It's a blessing. And it's my life. Uh, the Divine Mercy is what has saved my life. So um, a brief background of my history is I've been a professional musician since I was 16 or 17. So I'm 43 now, so 26 years. 26, is that right? <laughs> yes. And um, I started as a, a boy in um, doing gigs at nightclubs and... Um, and we got a record deal when we were 17 or 18 and did touring around the world and uh, releasing records. And, um, and then after that, um, began touring with artists like um, Gene Barnes and Guy Sebastian and Tina Arena and all these Australian singers here and overseas. And um, in between that time is when the Divine Mercy really changed my life. So when I was 29 years old, I was on a tour with um, a couple of big artists in Australia. And I was, at the, before the tour, I was doing three rosaries a day and feeling just amazingly. I'd got a daily mass and um, just feeling really strong in my faith and, and really, you know, people would, I'd be on tour with people and they would say, I don't know what it's about you, but um, they said, when I'm around some people, I feel really drained. I said, I don't feel that. I, don't never, I never feel that drained. They said, when I'm around that, person I feel like I'm my energy is depleted I can't I can't stay around that person too much I said I don't feel that at all in fact um, I feel the opposite I felt God's power and mercy um, more when I was around those people so um, I think the rosary was really really important in that in that um, protection and also being able to evangelize in those circumstances so I was 29 years old and and one day, I was touring with a lady, and I'd had a, um, a breakup in a relationship. And as I was in the middle of a tour, I was about to go on tour the next morning. And instead of going to tour, I woke up and I started crying. And for five months, I just was crying every day. I couldn't get up out of bed. I didn't. Um, I was not be able to function. And when I sing, I pray. I'm, I'm talking to Jesus, and I'm, I'm asking Him to sing to his people and to, if I'm singing to, in God's ear, then God can minister to whoever I'm in front of. At the time, I felt like I couldn't even pray. I felt like there was such a burden on my spirit and soul and I felt like the dark night of the soul. So it was so heavy on me and the weight was so um, massive that I just physically couldn't get up. And that lasted for five months. My parents couldn't understand because I was always active and I was out and I was doing, you know, very social things and then to do nothing for five months was just devastating. So mum took time off work, dad took time off work, my brother, it was like I was being babysat at home because I was so down, I couldn't, I couldn't move. And I'd say to God, I'd say, um, my auntie would call me and she goes, I've got a message for you. I was praying before the Blessed Sacrament and the message was, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And I said, thank you, Annie Karen. Thanks so much. But I, said, I didn't even say but. I said, thank you. I appreciate it. Hang up the phone. And then I just got back again. I couldn't, couldn't get up. And every time she says, remember the message God gave me. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I said, thank you. Thank you. And then I go back. And dad was at his wit's end. So he bought me a jigsaw puzzle. Just something to occupy my brain at the time. So this thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. And every day I go, come on, son. Time to do your jigsaw. And I was like. Okay, five pieces, go back to bed. Five pieces. And he goes, come on, activate your mind. Let's go out, let's do things. I was disheveled. I was, people who saw me thought, my gosh, what is this a different person? It's just, people wouldn't recognize me. My friends would recognize me. And little by little, this puzzle was being formed and I was doing this little thing and I was thinking, what am I doing this puzzle for? It had a violin and a sheet music on the puzzle and I thought, my gosh, this is, anyway, do the puzzle, do the puzzle. And um, I had this picture of the Divine Mercy. So the Divine Mercy would sit on my bed, just a little picture, that picture, exactly. 
about that big and I'd say, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me. And it was to the point of, it was even a physical manifestation of something, a spiritual bondage, because I'd come back from going out and my whole face would get tense as soon as I walked in the house. My whole face would become anxious and I couldn't, my mum says, stop frowning, wipe the frown off your face. I said, I can't. I'm just, I was in bondage. And I see this picture and I say, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. And I felt no, nothing. I just, just didn't feel the release or the relief. I just still, help me, Jesus. My parents were at the point of they hospitalized me, nearly hospitalized me. And this one day I had the picture and I said, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, nothing. I said, Jesus, I surrender my heart, my mind, my body, my soul and my will under your blood. I just gave it and this peace came over my entire room and over my body and just washed me and I, my face went down and I still I feel it and the Holy Spirit came over me and I, I walked out of my room my mum said what did you do what happened to you just immediately because she saw I was at, at peace I said I gave myself to the divine mercy she said we were, she goes but what else what did you do I said, I gave myself to the divine mercy. I surrendered to the divine mercy. So what Rita was saying before, she said, your darkest, you give your, your, all the stuff that is, you said something about the darkest parts of your spirit or the, 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 the things that are hardest in your spirit. They were the things I surrendered to God. I said, take over. I was carrying this football of pain and I was holding it for so long that God couldn't do anything while I was holding it. As soon as I released and gave myself to divine mercy, the peace of God came over me, finished the puzzle. <laughs> and the puzzle and the, the funny, the, not funny, the amazing thing about it, God's providence was, so the finish, as I finished the puzzle, put the last pieces in, the violin was on the puzzle and the sheet music was on the puzzle and the music on the puzzle, the only words on the puzzle were, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's the only, God is amazing. Praise Jesus. So at the time, just before my depression, I had Stevie Wonder had liked my music and he'd said, fly him over to America, let's make recordings and things. I said, oh. My friend goes, can you come to America? I said, I can't. I can't even get out of bed. So there's five months passed and I had closed the door to Stevie Wonder. Closed it. As soon as I got out of depression, I said, God, if it's your will for me to do this, open the door again because I'm just, I stuffed it up. I gave away the biggest opportunity in my life, I stuffed it. Two or three days later, a call comes from America, can you come to Stevie Wonder's daughter's birthday and sing for her? I said, yes. Immediately, the television, I worked for um, X Factor and Australian Idol, all these television shows came in, all the work came in. I started touring again, God restored everything. But in that five months that I had no work, I couldn't work at all, I wrote one song on this, Guy Sebastian's record, the first record he ever made, and that paid my whole year that I wasn't working. So the, 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 the time that, that I felt incapacitated and I was incapacitated and I was immovable and I didn't trust God and I was hanging on and struggling, God was saying, I have you, I've got you, financially I've got you, physically I've got you, family I've got you, in every aspect I've got you. Just Surrender it to me and relax and be at peace. So Padre Pio says, pray and don't worry. Do that. So shortly after that, we wrote, uh, Guy Sebastian and I wrote this song for World Youth Day. I think, I don't know how long after that was, but I'll sing that. I'm laughing because John and I call each other nicknames and I call him Meat Pie, he calls me Papa Dum. Ends 